Hey gang, welcome back. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna keep it short. We're just gonna talk about carbocation stability. And chances are, just based on the examples that we've done and the problems we've seen, you already know all of this. But I just wanted to wrap it in a video, just so if you there was ever any confusion, you could go to one place if you had any questions about carbocation stability. Okay, so carbocations, we first ran into them when we were doing SN1, right? Throwback to solvolysis, you know, good leaving group, all that good jazz, right? So I just wanted to, you know, to say here are all the carbocations in our life, most, you know, generically speaking, and you know, why are one, is one more stable than the other? Yada yada yada. Okay, so the simplest carbocation we could technically have, right, would be if we had a CH3 with a positive charge, right, a methyl carbocation. The rule in carbocation land is the more neighbors that you're attached to, the more stable you are, right? So if we had something like methyl, primary, secondary, oh, not that, sorry, secondary, and tertiary, right, as you can see, going down this way, we're getting more substituted. Substituted meaning we're getting the, the carbon that has, uh, you know, that is lacking the full octet, the carbocation, is the carbons being attached to more things. Here we're just attached to three hydrogens, no carbons. Here, one carbon, two carbons, three carbons, right? So if you can remember all the way back to when we did the free radical chain reaction, the reason why stability goes up as we go down and get attached to more things, more substituted, stability increases. It's due to, uh, you know, it's an induct effect through hyperconjugation, and uh, you know, there's there's being there's electron density being lended by the neighbors, right? So the more friends you have, the better off you are. Friends being carbons you're attached to. But the reason why I wanted to you know make this video was in uh, as we push on to doing things with aromaticity and uh, having you know, more double bonds, pi bonds in our systems that we work with, um, we can run into things like this. Let's say we had a carbocation right here. This seemingly looks like a primary carbocation. However, I hope you're thinking to yourself, well, we do have that pi bond next door, and the fact that we do means I can draw some resonance and move this pi bond over here. So, not only is this positive charge on this primary carbocation there, it's actually bouncing back and forth. It's never on just this carbon or this carbon. We actually have a situation where it's spread out between them. The actual, it's delocalized, right? And we know that when we have a situation like this, this is known as an allylic carbocation. And on that same notion, if we take this one step forward, if we were to have a benzene ring or some type of aromatic system and we had a carbocation just sitting outside, right? This again looks like just a normal, everyday primary carbocation, but that is not all he is. This is actually a benzylic carbocation, right? And don't get confused when you have a benzylic carbocation, it's weird because it's just outside the ring, it is not on one of the carbons in the ring. Remember that always. But remember, so because we're benzylic, because we're next to, we have a, a carbon with an empty p orbital here, and we're next to this system of carbons that have p orbitals galore and electrons inside of them, we can draw a whole heck of a lot of resonance here, right? So if I were to draw my resonance double-headed arrow, I could swing these ones outside. I didn't touch either of these bonds. I moved this bond outside. Well, that looks too close together. Oh, geez. Here I go. Way to go, Joe. Hold on one second, guys. There we go. And then here I can play a big game of Ring Around the Rosie, because I can move this over here. And then one more time, I can move this right here. So you can see that even though we look like we're primary in this position, we actually have four resonance structures. This charge is distributed amongst the whole ring. 
you know, a lot of the members inside the ring. So this is not just your run of the mill primary carbocation, neither of these. The resonance is a huge stabilizing factor. So what I wanted to say, and depending on your source, but I'm just gonna go with the resonance being the kind of be all end all, just never forget that if you have benzylic carbocation, that is your most stable carbocation. Next, to, so I'm gonna say greater than, as in greater, like stability is the greatest. Then you're gonna run into your allylic. Then you'll run into your tertiary. Then your secondary. Then your primary. And then for emphasis, because you we never, ever, ever, ever would do methyl. But that, your methyl would be last. So just never forget resonance is king. Um, and some, some sources will say that this specific carbocation right here is just a smidge less stable than tertiary, but other people say it isn't. I always go with residence as king or queen, uh, cause shout out queens, but, uh, benzoic, allylic cause of residence. And then here it's more neighbors you have, right? So stability goes up this way. Okay, gang. So I hope if you had any carbocation questions. We solved them.